Hey there, we're back to finish up our limits approaching plus or minus infinity. We've done some facts about infinity. We've done two examples on limits approaching infinity. I just wanted to put this up for you. If you wanna pause the video in a minute and write this into your notes, this might be a good idea to have on hand. This is your recipe for limits approaching plus and minus infinity. We actually have another recipe for limits approaching real numbers. Uh, but this one's slightly different. So step one, plug the x value being approached into the function. You will get one of the following versions. You're either going to get infinity, negative infinity, or some version of plus or minus infinity over plus or minus infinity. So you move on to step two. If you get either of these first two, infinity or negative infinity, just stop. This simply tells you that your function has no horizontal asymptote. But if you get the undefined infinity over infinity, then you must divide each term of the function by the highest power of x in the denominator. Once you do that, you know to reduce. And finally, plug the x value being approached back into the reduced function. This answer will be your horizontal asymptote, or the y value being approached. So that's your recipe, feel free to pause. And I just wanna do one last example here. I got cut a little short on my last video. So one more example, I wanted to do one approaching negative infinity. So let's take a look at it. Following the recipe, we're gonna find the limit as x approaches negative infinity of x squared plus two x minus seven divided by three x plus five, another rational function. So let's go ahead and plug negative infinity in. By principle of dominance, my term of highest power here is x squared, so I'm just gonna plug negative infinity squared divided by, my highest power here is 3x, so three times negative infinity. And this gives me positive infinity, because when I square, that turns positive, over negative infinity. And this most certainly is undefined. So I have to go on to step two. I'm gonna divide each term by the highest power of x in the denominator, which in this case is just x. So that will be x squared divided by x plus 2x divided by x minus 7 divided by x all over 3x divided by x plus 5 divided by x. Step 3 tells me to reduce. And that's going to give me x squared over x is just x. 2x over x is just 2, 7 over x stays the same, 3x over x is 3, and 5 over x stays the same. So now I'm ready to plug my negative infinity back one more time. So plugging in, that would be negative infinity plus 2 minus 7 over negative infinity divided by 3 plus 5 over negative infinity. Now I know these two guys here and here go to zero. So with that being said, I've got negative infinity plus two all over three. Negative infinity, if you add two to negative infinity, you're still gonna be very small with no bound. And if you divide that by three, you're still gonna be very small. So I'm gonna go with a final answer of negative infinity. Now to confirm this, even though I haven't been making you graph these rational functions, I do have my TI-84, and I just want to show you how I can confirm this answer on it. So if I bring up the TI and turn it on and go to Y equals, I'm going to clear out my old stuff, and I'm going to go ahead and type in this rational function. So I have X squared plus 2X minus 7 all over 3X plus 5, and I'm going to hit graph. And here's what the graph looks like. Now, if you look, as the x comes out to negative infinity, so I'm heading leftward, I'm getting smaller, look at what my y values are doing. They are actually also headed to negative infinity. If I would stretch this graph, it looks like I'm going down, 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 down. So it makes sense that my y values are getting smaller and smaller and smaller as my x values get smaller and smaller and smaller. So this just kind of confirms that, which makes me feel pretty good about my answer. Okay, so don't forget the recipe. 
Make sure you have that. You've now got three examples, so hopefully you're feeling pretty good about limits at infinity.